Hey everybody, today we're going to be using the derivatives of a function to understand its shape and sort of how it behaves when you look at the graph. So we're going to take a look at this function x plus 1 over x today, which is x plus x to the negative first. And what we want to do is we want to find a few things out about it. We want to find its intervals of increase and decrease. That means where the derivative is positive and where the derivative is negative. We want to find the local extrema, meaning the local maxes and mins. We'll be able to do this as soon as we know the intervals of increase and decrease. And lastly, we're going to want to find the intervals of concavity, meaning we want to know where the second derivative is positive for concave up, and we want to know where the second derivative is negative for concave down. So let's go ahead and, and start this up. I have the original function and both derivatives already finished here, and it's just a very simple derivatives, nothing really crazy here and we're going to be using these to find all of these uh, qualities here. So uh, let's start it up. So if I want to find the intervals of increase and decrease, the first things I need to look for are the critical points. We want to look, so critical points, we want to look for all the places where the derivative is equal to zero and all of the places where the derivative uh, does not exist. We want to find all possible places where either of these things happen. So let's find out where the derivative is equal to zero first. Finding out where the derivative is equal to zero means we're finding out where this one minus one over x squared is equal to zero. And this is just plain old algebra. We don't have to do anything crazy here. This means one is equal to one over x squared, which means that x squared is equal to one, meaning that x is equal to plus or minus one. And so we have two critical points of this type, two critical points where the derivative is zero, okay? And on the other side, we have derivative or critical points where the derivative fails to exist. And so we have to ask ourselves, where is this going to fail to exist if it does fail anywhere? And in this case, if you put a zero in the denominator of this fraction, this derivative will not exist. And so this is going to happen when x is equal to zero. So we have three critical points two of the type where the derivative is equal to zero, and one of the type where the derivative fails to exist. And what we're going to do is we are going to find intervals of increase and decrease using this. And so we make ourselves a sign chart, which is just essentially a number line, with a couple of points marked off. We mark off all of the critical points, zero, negative one, positive one. And we want to find out where these inside of these intervals we want to find out where the derivative is either positive or negative. Because if we can find out where the derivative is positive, we know where the function increases. If we can find out where the derivative is negative, we know the function decreases. And the secret here is that in order to change from positive der derivative to negative derivative or from negative to positive derivative, it has to either be zero in between or it has to jump, uh, meaning it fails to exist at some spot. So that's the idea. And so the only places we could possibly make this transition from negative derivative to positive or back are going to be at these critical points. And so we're just going to test a single number inside of each interval. Uh, and let's choose the numbers now. So I'll pick negative 2 from this interval. I will pick a negative 1 half from this interval, a positive 1 half from that interval, and a positive 2 from the last interval. So I'm going to take each of these numbers and put them into the derivative and this is going to tell me how the entire interval is going to behave. So if I put negative 2 into the derivative, it's going to be 1 over uh, a negative 2 squared, and a 1 over a negative 2 squared is 1 minus 1 fourth. So 1 minus 1 fourth is going to be 3 fourths, which is positive, right? So this entire interval is going to have a positive derivative. There is no way anything on this interval is going to give us a negative derivative because it would have to either pass through zero first or it would have to fail, the derivative would either have to pass through zero or would have to fail to exist. And those things only happen at the critical points. We found the only places of transition already. So this entire interval has a positive derivative. And we do the same thing for all of the intervals. So we put a negative one half in here, and we, when we put a negative one half in here, we're going to be getting a one minus one over one half squared. Well, a one half squared is going to be one fourth, and a one over one fourth is four. So one minus four, well, that's going to give us something negative. So that's negative. Next up, uh, we put one half in here. Well, if we put one half in here, the same thing happens. 
and we end up getting something negative. Uh, and if we put two in here, we're going to end up getting something positive. So we just put all of those numbers into the derivative and it told us where the derivative was positive or negative. Well, this tells us that we are going to be increasing on any interval where the derivative is positive. And so this is going to be negative infinity to uh, negative one. Uh, and it's going to be the interval from one all the way to infinity. Uh, we can also find out where we're decreasing. We're going to be decreasing on the intervals from negative one to zero and the interval from zero to positive one. We are not allowed to include the zero here. The reason why we can't include zero as a place where the function decreases is because the derivative does not exist there. This is a, actually a vertical asymptote of the original function. And so the derivative does not exist there, which means the derivative is not negative. It just doesn't exist. Uh, so the derivative, uh, so the function uh, is not decreasing there. It just has no status whatsoever as far as increasing or decreasing is concerned. So there we go. We know where we are increasing. We know where we are decreasing. Let's find the local extrema. Local maxes and local mins are going to be the two kinds of extrema we're going to be looking for. And you're going to be able to identify them by just looking at the intervals of increase and decrease. So let's try this out. If you were increasing first and then you were decreasing afterwards, that means that you were a local maximum. And so x equals negative 1 is a local maximum. If you were decreasing first and then increasing afterwards, uh, this is going to be a local minimum. And so that means 1 is a local minimum. Now, 0, even if we had changed sign here from negative to positive or from positive to negative, Zero couldn't be a critical, or zero couldn't be a local extrema anyway, uh, because zero is a vertical asymptote of the original function. So we do have to be a little bit careful when we're talking about this change from positive to negative, or from negative to positive. You can only really be a local extrema if you are going to be a uh, critical point where the derivative is going to be zero. Now that's a slight lie. Actually, you can have corners in the graph and all of that, but in this Calculus 1 course, we're not going to be dealing with graphs like that. So uh, for our purposes, the only type of critical points that are going to give you uh, actual maxes or mins are going to be this first type, the derivative being equal to zero. So okay, that's being done. Let's go ahead and finish this off by finding the intervals of concavity. This process is exactly the same as the process that we did for the first derivative, we're just going to do it for the second derivative. So the intervals of concavity are going to be all of the places where the second derivative is positive or where the second derivative is negative. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start by finding all of the places where the second derivative is equal to zero and all of the places where the second derivative does not exist in the same way that we did up here for the first derivative. So if the second derivative is equal to zero, that means two over x cubed is equal to zero which if you try to solve this, you multiply on both sides by x cubed, you're going to get two is equal to zero. What this means is that there is no x value ever that is going to make two over x cubed equal to zero. Uh, two over x cubed being equal to zero is just as likely as two being equal to zero, which is to say it's impossible, it can't happen. So there's none of these, uh, so none. All right, so let's, what about where the der second derivative fails to exist? Well, again, the second derivative could fail to exist at zero, so that could happen. So we do have a single uh, place where the second derivative fails to exist. All right, so these two kinds of places are the only places where you could change from a positive deriv second derivative to a negative second derivative. And so we're going to do the same process. We're going to make ourselves a number line uh, over here. There we go. And we're going to mark these places and all we need to do, there's only two intervals, and so we need to pick one point from each interval, let's say a negative one and a positive one. So we get to pick one point from each interval, and we're going to test them, and we want to find out whether the second derivative is positive there or negative there. So there's our second derivative. Uh, so let's try it out. We'll take this negative one and we will put it into the second derivative. When you do that, you get a negative two, and so that's going to be a negative second derivative. And that means that this entire interval from negative infinity all the way up to zero is going to have a negative second derivative because the only possible place you could transition is at zero. 
Uh, we do the same trick here for the other interval. We put 1 into the second derivative. We get 2, which is a positive number. That tells us that the second derivative is going to be positive on that entire interval. So when we talk about concavity, there's concave up and there's concave down, right? All we need to do is we just need to list what we've seen here already on our sign chart. So on our sign chart, we said, hey, look, everything from negative infinity to zero is going to be up uh, wrong, wrong, wrong. Scratch that. Try again. Uh, on our sign chart, everything from zero to infinity is going to be concave up because it has positive second derivative. Everything from negative infinity to zero is going to be concave down because it has a negative second derivative. Zero is not included in either interval because it's that vertical asymptote and it has neither positive nor negative second derivative because the second derivative does not exist there. So anyway, uh, this is answering uh, several questions all at once. This is We've had several homework problems like this that talks about increasing, decreasing, local max, local min, concave up, concave down. So we can find all of this stuff by just using the same process of finding out where a derivative fails to exist or finding out where it's equal to zero and making a sign chart. It's the same thing whether you're doing it for the first derivative or the second derivative. We just change the name of what we're looking for. Anyway, I hope you found this very helpful. As always, stop by to ask questions and happy mathing.